way. <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a, probably the most um, violent anti-violence play there is uh, that has ever been written. And um, in fact, uh, we can promise that there was no cats harmed in the making of this production, even though our special effects artist has worked to make it seem as though a terrible bit of violence has been done to them. Yeah, um, the, the play is, is essentially a comedy about terrorism, which is in this time a very, very uh, tricky subject matter and uh, one that um, has real danger to it, but it's also clearly exceptionally timely. Um, and for McDonough to take on this uh, subject matter, um, both in terms of the Irish Republican Army and the INLA, um, but also for us to tell this story now with the events of 9-11, it's also a particularly tricky um, subject matter to make light of. Uh, but McDonough, uh, the playwright, um, is absolutely exploring uh, what happens to the, an ideal that becomes perverted, um, that goes too far and turns in on itself and becomes something else. Uh, so it, it is a, uh, a play um, uh, that has a lot of those dualities in it. Um, that while there's an exceptional amount of violence in the play, there's an exceptional amount of humor. Um, and uh, for me, at its core, the play is a, a satire of extremism and extremist impulses. I think what's interesting about the extremist and the extreme quality of uh, Puri is that he loves his cat more than anything in the world. And I think we, I think all of us know what it's like to be so deeply in love with something, a person, an object, that we lose track of the bigger picture. And uh, I think everything that Borg does, I think he thinks he's doing the right thing. Uh, I think, you know, uh, you, he believes that they have messed, killed his cat, and they must pay. Just like the people who, like the English who are in Britain, they have no right to be there. They must get out. If they won't get out by us telling them in peaceful ways, then we will force them out. And uh, I think that's what's uh, challenging for me, is to make it really believable and really mean something uh, to me. And, and, and personally, I remember when I was a kid, I had a uh, turtle that I loved. And my, <laughs> My sister, when she just got her permit, she ran over my turtle. And uh, it devastated me. And for like a year, I kept a piece of his shell in my back pocket. And it was my emblem, you know, because this thing kind of propelled me, you know. And, and, and it's, it's funny that, you know, years later, uh, Wee Thomas drives the character that I'm playing, another pet, drives the motivation of this guy. I can understand that. I mean, it's, it, coming from Pittsburgh too, it's like a it's like a rabid Steeler fan in December. You lose. You have so much passion for them to win, and if they lose, it's devastating. I mean, I'll see my buddies cry, and I'll see his wife say, "It's only a game. it's not a game. It's everything to me." You know. So that kind of passion is what's exciting for me to try to tap into. not natural for me to, I mean, I'm a strong person and I can assert myself, but there's mostly girls in my family, so uh, there's a, and a lot of manners, so there's not a lot of interrupting and everyone, the, like, kind of respect we is... We have no manners. No, all the time, all the time. Um, so, I'm a, th I'm a thinking person and a quiet person and I'll think about stuff and then I'll try and discuss it and that's not how we roll here. Here it's like, all right, like, Let's do it, and just like jumping in all the way, and really finding volume a lot is a good way with the guys to <laughs> get in focus. Um, but yeah, no, asserting myself, uh, playing Maraid is, uh, she has different tactics for achieving like uh, things that I, than, than I would normally do. Um, she's, 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 
she's a girl boy kind of a thing. She's more of a tomboy than I uh, than I am. And so like on stage, like I can find that and I can get into it. And sometimes I'll start to do like a Kira tactic. I'm like, not that's not how she would do this at all. So then I have to like come at it a different way. And then the other challenge is, you know, coming into rehearsal, like stepping out of Kira kind of and like gearing up for for being married on stage and then uh, stepping off stage or like during notes or something being like, I'm listening to what you're saying right now. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot you with my rifle. Right. <laughs> like you can discuss with it's me. It's really frightening to give notes to actors with guns. <laughs> 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 because I mean, that's one of the challenges I think of rehearsing this play is that you have to really break the, in rehearsal, you have to break the pl play apart into individual beats and moments. But this play that lives at such a high intensity, it's difficult to take a small beat of the play, examine it, and let it live at the kind of intensity that it will live in, in the performance. And so it's a, it's a difficult challenge to, to try to force ourselves to slow down, to make sure that we're being really specific with the work, and trust that when we get when we start telling the story in flow, that it will live at the kind of intensity that we think it needs to. So that's a really difficult thing to do. It is. Um, it's exhausting as oh, well. Yeah. These guys are, are, are bringing an incredible amount of energy to the rehearsal room every day. Um, uh, and it's a marathon to rehearse this play. A lot of time in theater, the moment that something violent happens on stage is either handled in a theatrical way where, you know, uh, a piece of red fabric comes out in its blood, uh, or you slow down time in a way that to show that someone is, has been uh, killed and then passing. What's interesting about this piece is the effects are so incredibly real that you don't have to suspend your disbelief, that it is virtually happening in front of you. The effects are so real. Um, and so I think that's another interesting layer to this, is while there's a lot of technical things going on, I also feel like the, the way the special effects are, are handled, being completely real, also makes it, in a way, a little easier for you to go to that very dark space at times that the, the play goes to. Uh, because um, Steve Tolan, the special effects artist, has created a world that feels tangible. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's a, that will come later when we're in the heading towards performance, that we don't have to imagine these things. They f really feel like they're happening in space. Yeah. The, the genre that this play um, has inspired is called In Your Face. And there is a, a movement in um, English theater uh, that is exceptionally um, uh, uh, directly, literally in your face. And the Grandel could not be a better space for that. The Grandel, I love the intimacy of it, that the audience wraps around the stage. The, um, all of the uh, great humor and hilarity of this piece is very accessible because of that proximity, and so too all of the incredible physical violence in the play. It is, it will be an exceptionally immediate experience for audience members that they will very much be in the room with these psychopaths <laughs> and extremists, and, um, and that proximity is really, really exciting.